Kansas City Chiefs beat the Eagles in Super Bowl 57, I want to give you some of my takeaways, thoughts on the game, and things the Bengals could learn from the matchup going into the offseason to make sure that they make another Super Bowl run next season. Hi again, everyone, and welcome in to Cincinnati Bengals Talk. I'm James Rapine of AllBengals.com, and the offseason is officially here. And, well, that doesn't mean CBT stops because we have guests coming this week. Last week, if you missed my conversation with Solomon Wilcots, it's a, a really great conversation, especially about Joe Burrow's future, the future of T. Higgins, the future of Jamar Chase. Plus, our free agency previews continue. And we talked about Hayden Hurst late last week. We'll continue them this week. So plenty of coming your way along with draft breakdowns from Joe Goodberry every Tuesday night, Bengals on the Brain right here on CBT. But let's dive into a few takeaways from Super Bowl 57. Uh, and let's start with the officials. That's the storyline. I tweeted about it. A lot of people are talking about it. A lot of the talking heads uh, discussing it today. And I know what James Bradbury said after the game. He grabbed him. He thought he could get away with it. Uh, good job, James. Good job to... Admit that, whatever. I hate that the game was decided that way. And it doesn't matter which way. I didn't have uh, a heavy rooting interest. It wasn't like I was looking at this game through Philly-colored glasses. I really, and this might rub some of you the wrong way, didn't care that the Chiefs and, and Bengals have their history. Like, if the Chiefs went on to win, they wanted to, uh, it, you know, that was fine. Didn't bother me. I didn't feel some type of way about it. Although I'm sure a lot of our viewers did because of, you know, the Chiefs beating the Bengals in the AFC title game, the rivalry there, all of those things. I didn't feel that way. And so to me, I just wanted a great game. And it was a great game for 58 plus minutes. Back and forth, Mahomes limping, Hurts playing great outside of the turnover. And the Philly defense not living up to expectations. Meanwhile, the Philly offense really doing whatever they wanted in the first half. And it was just this back and forth battle. And I wanted to see Hurts get the ball one more time. And we should have seen Hurts get the ball one more time. You can't make that kind of call. And yet here we are, back-to-back -back years now, where a holding call completely changes the, the final two minutes of the game. The defensive holding on Logan Wilson was crap. We remember that against Cooper Cup. Heck, he even batted that pass down. This one, I honestly think, as I kick the camera, I honestly think that Juju Smith-Schuster is still running or still would be running to try to catch that ball. There was no chance, even on air, if it was just him and Mahomes at the park, he catches up to that pass. The holding was ridiculous because I don't even think it was a true hold. Was he there? Did he, he touch him? A slight, maybe a slight tuck. Oh, well, you know, people are going to say, well, that's a penalty. Fine. But if you call every little ticky tack thing in the final two minutes, it's going to really muck up the game. And I just, I don't like the call there. I think it's bad. I think that it, it robbed us of a what would have been an awesome ending, regardless of how it went. Maybe the Eagles go down and kick the game tying field goal and it goes into overtime. Maybe they score the game winning touchdown. Maybe they score quick and Mahomes gets it back and goes back downfield. There's so many things that could have happened that we didn't get to see. And I hate it. I, I hate it. And so, look, it, uh, it was a heck of a game. Don't like the outcome. Uh, uh, of uh, uh, or the officials determining the outcome. I will say this though, we can learn just looking at what happened in that game and in what the these offenses did, what the Bengals need. Speed at running back, I think that matters. You see guys like Boston Scott, Kenneth Gainwell. I mean, they were deep, the Eagles were. You, you look at the way the Chiefs, a pass first offense, right? Well, Isaiah Pacheco, really efficient, over five yards a carry. Jarek McKinnon, such a huge part of what they do, right? They need, the Bengals need guys, interchangeable speed guys that can do a bunch of different things, catch passes out of the backfield, run between the tackles. That's what the Chiefs have. And let's be honest here, McKinnon and Pacheco, they're not costing much. So I think that that was a factor. I certainly think, you look at the tight ends in this game, having a Dallas Goddard, how big was he for Jalen Hurts? Obviously, we know what Travis Kelsey, what his value is. Tight end. Can you get a dynamic tight end that's explosive, that's going to put some pressure on opposing defenses? I like Hayden Hurst. I don't think he puts a ton of pressure on opposing defenses. That stands out to me. Offense, 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 offense. 
And there's going to be a lot of talk about defense and free agency and all of those things. I still don't know if the Eagles defense showed up, right? And, and part of that had to do with, and this was the worst part of Super Bowl 57 to me outside of the officiating and really even including the officiating, the field, the playing surface. It can't be that slippery. This is the Super Bowl. And it was cool. Oh, they, they, they were literally rolling the field out so it would get rain and then, or so they would be able to uh, keep it fresh. And then it didn't work. Maybe don't try a new field during a Super Bowl. Maybe go with what you know that's going to be equality because that was not quality. Just uh, my two cents on that. I was sick of seeing people, you know, players on both sides, slip, slip, slip. And I thought that Philly pass rush was uh, kind of struggling a bit because of the, the surface. By the way, you got to adjust. And they were not able to get to Mahomes. And it was a, a heroic performance by him. He played really well, even though the final numbers don't look you know crazy. It's not like he threw for 350 or anything like that. But he just played at a really, really high level throughout the game and, and gave his, his guys a chance to win. But all those little pieces, they matter. And so if I'm the Bengals, I'm certainly in on more speed at receiver. Can you add a, a fourth receiver that just complements what you have in Higgins, Chase, and Boyd? It can be a young guy. It can be a guy on a rookie deal. It doesn't have to cost. I'm not saying go spend on that. Can you get a, a more dynamic playmaking tight end that's going to be able to make some plays like Goddard did? And obviously Kelsey, but Kelsey's the exception. But we'll just use Dallas Goddard because I think that's realistic. And then you just have to be more diverse at running back. And I like Piran. I like Mixon. Neither one. Like the Chiefs' backfield is better than the Bengals' backfield. That's wild. It's wild to say. But with the money that the Bengals are, are spending on Mixon, that can't be the case. And yet it is. And so certainly that's, uh, that, that's a sticking point. Uh, defensively, I, I thought that both of these teams – struggled for the most part the Chiefs forced the big turnover that was the difference but neither te neither unit really stopped the offenses the offenses stopped themselves at, at points but that was about it so that's that's it offense 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 and the officials and I hate that officials are a topic but they are and they should be I, I hate that call there I do Say what you want, and I really don't care what James Bradbury had to say after the game. I think he was taking the high road instead of complaining. It's certainly an interesting strategy, one that I understand. I hate that that call was made there. Again, if if you tap tap a, a jump shooter in the wrist and it doesn't affect the shot, doesn't impact the play, I don't want that called. If you bump a jump shooter, let's just say that, bump a uh, jump shooter with three seconds to go, after he lands and it doesn't impact the, the game or, or impact the, the shot, I don't want it called. That did not impact the play at all. And TJ Hushmanzada tweeted about it. Logan Wilson tweeted about it. A lot of players, uh, current and, and, and former players tweeted about it. And I agree. I just, I hate it. And yet here we are. It is what it is. But I figured I would give you my two cents on Super Bowl 57. Congrats to the Chiefs and uh, the Bengals. Well, I think offensively, you add some more pieces here. It would uh, it would go a long way. By the way, speaking of offense, Brian Callahan, Bengals OC, back. Dan Pitcher, back. We'll, uh, we'll see on Lou Anarumo. Feels like he's going to be back. I'm going to have a video on all things coaching staff once we uh, get official word on that. Maybe by the time you see this video, official word does come down that Lou is back. Regardless, that's coming. We have a ton coming. We're going to the Combine later this month. We have you covered. So hit that subscribe button. Ring the bell and buckle up because just because the offseason is here does not mean CBT stops. And for more on the Bengals, make sure you check out allbengals.com. Also, the Locked on Bengals podcast. For Andrew Fox Miller, our channel coordinator, I'm James Erpine. Signing off for now on CBT, Cincinnati Bengals Talk.